This is a presentation on formalism derived from two books on literary theory, Rifkin and Ryan's Anthology and Ryan's Practical Introduction. In the early 20th century, the study of literature underwent a significant shift. Prior to this time, literary analysis primarily focused on biographical and historical context, valuing the content and message of the work rather than how it was executed. However, two movements emerged that took a different path, Russian formalism and American New Criticism. Russian formalists, including Viktor Shklovsky, Roman Jakobsen, Boris Tomachevsky, and Boris Eichenbaum, drew inspiration from philosophers like Edmund Husserl. They sought to isolate the objects of knowledge in their purest form, moving away from the idea that literature simply reflects the world. Instead, they explored the characteristics and devices that allow literature to fulfill its unique purpose. One of the main contributions of Russian formalism was the concept of defamiliarization. Defamiliarization is a literary technique by which ordinary things are presented in a way that appears unfamiliar, challenging our conventional way of seeing them. Viktor Shklovsky demonstrated this through his analysis of Tolstoy's description of flogging, which made us question the practice considered normal at that time. The formalists approached literature by breaking it down into its constituent parts. They examined narrative in prose, prose and the use of sound in poetry. They made a clear distinction between, distinction between plot, which refers to the actual story being told, and story, which encompasses the sequence of events and their duration. The separation allowed them to analyze the narrative strategies employed, such as point of view and narrative voice. In the realm of poetry, they distinguished between ordinary language used for practical communication and poetic language that intentionally distorts language through rhythm, rhyme, alliteration, and repetition. Formalists, including Roman Jakobsen, are often associated with structuralism. They view culture as governed by the same rules as language, and many formalists are linguists themselves. This emphasis on language structure influenced scholars like Vladimir Propp, who examined the narrative motifs in folk tales and discovered shared sequences among them. American New Criticism, represented by critics like Clint Brooks, William Umzat, John Ransom, and Alan Tate were influenced by idealist philosophers like Peredetto Grocci. They rejected the notion that truth could be achieved solely through empirical and scientific methods, which were gaining prominence at that time. New critics cautioned against the intentional fallacy and the effective fallacy, separating the work from the author's intentions and the reader's emotional response. They believed that the work of literature should be studied as an independent entity, free from the influence of biographical or sociological factors. This approach aimed to uncover the inherent qualities and truths within the text itself. New critics focused on close reading of poems to reveal how literature reflects concrete universals or universal truths. Through poetic tropes such as metaphor and symbol, Ordinary objects can be connected uh, to universal meanings. Furthermore, irony and paradox are employed to reconcile seemingly opposite elements. Keats' poem, Ode on a Grecian Urn, exemplifies this with its upon abundant use of paradoxes that connect opposites like life and death. New critics argued that poetry's use of connotative language allowed it to be both specific and general while scientific language, being denotative, focused on empirical observation, falls short in describing universal truths. They valued the traditional religious and aesthetic values embedded in literature, fearing that these values would be displaced by the, positives, the positivist science of their time. Their emphasis was on the unique power of literature to convey complex and profound meanings beyond the realm of scientific analysis. Formalists, like new critics, provide different approaches to analyzing Shakespeare's play King Lear and Fitzgerald's novel The Great Gatsby, as we will see now. In analyzing King Lear, the new critics focused on paradoxes and irony within the play to demonstrate how universal ideas are fused with concrete examples. 
These paradoxes highlight the reversal of values and the social disorder caused by valuing the worthless and despising the valuable. Let's take this clip as an example. I love your majesty according to my bond, no more, nor less. Ah, uh -huh, Cordelia, mend your speech a little, lest you may mar your fortunes. Lear's caution to Cord for Cordelia to mend your speech a little, lest you may mar your fortune, exemplifies a paradoxical expression. Despite their close familiar ties, Lear and Cordelia are emotionally distant and morally judged, emphasizing the dissonance between their connection by blood and their divided judgments. The new critics argue that such paradoxes highlight the play's exploration of the fragility of human relationships and the potential for miscommunication and misjudgment. This next scene is used to demonstrate a racial formalist example. I thought the king had more affected the Duke of Albany than Cornwall. Well, it all seems that way. Right. But now, in the division of the kingdom, it appears not which of the dukes he values most. The Russian formalist approach to King Lear emphasizes the form and structure of the play. This opening scene employs indirect presentation, where Lear is introduced through the voices of other characters. This technique highlights the theme of people's real intentions being difficult to know and connect to the play's argument about the need for strong monarchs to control unpredictability and treachery. Next, in analyzing Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby, we can also apply the perspective of the new critics and the formalists. The novel presents a distorted perception of the world and poetic illusion. Poetic discourse merges normally separate realms and elevates ordinary things into extraordinary ones. The new critics and formalists recognize the transformative power of language and the constructed nature of the characters' identities. In this novel, poetic discourse plays a crucial part in transforming the ugly world into a beautiful one. Characters like Daisy and Jordan are depicted as ethereal and floating, defying gravity and exuding an otherworldly beauty. On the other hand, characters like Myrtle are associated with inappropriate metaphors, highlighting the contrast between their nature and the elevated depiction of others. The use of poetic language emphasizes the transformative power of metaphor and its impact on perceptions. Poetic discourse in The Great Gatsby serves to distinguish characters and worlds. Gatsby's extravagant parties are characterized by evocative, uh, evocative metaphors that elevate the atmosphere, depicting them as enchanting and filled with beauty. While enough colored lights, with enough colored lights to make a Christmas tree of his garden, of Gatsby's garden. However, characters like Tom, Daisy, and Jordan react negatively and contemptuously to these parties, highlighting their disdain from, for Gatsby's world and the transformative power of poetic metaphor. Fitzgerald suggests that these characters exist outside the realm of poetry, emphasizing shallow values and materialism. The transformative power of poetic metaphor clashes with the attitude and beliefs of characters like Tom, Daisy, and Jordan. They are averse to the kinds of transformations that poetic metaphors offers, as it challenges their privileged positions and exposes the artificiality of their lives. The world of Tom, Daisy, and Jordan is governed by shallow values and materialism, which is at odds with the profound beauty and possibilities that poetic metaphors represents in Gatsby's world. In conclusion, the formalist movements of Russian formalism and American New Criticism brought about a significant shift in the study of literature during the early 20th century. Russian formalists redirected the focus from context to language, highlighting the concept of defamiliarization and exploring the unique device of literature. American New Criticism looked at the intentional and effective fallacies separating the work from the author's intention and the reader's emotion, aiming to reveal concre concrete universals and universal truths. They focused on close reading as well. These movements challenged the prevailing approach that prioritized prioritize biographical and historical context, expanding our understanding of 
the intrinsic value and purpose of literature. The new critics and Russian formalists offer valuable perspectives for analyzing literature, such as we've seen with Shakespeare's King Lear and Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby. The new critics focus on paradoxes, irony, and close reading, while the Russian formalists emphasize the form, structure, and language of the work. By applying these theories, we can deepen our understanding of the complexities, themes, and transformative elements within these literary works.